Are ready? Nazareth, where Jesus was a kid. And it's an interesting town. Now, like most cities or, or villages in Israel, especially the land of, of Israel, uh, there are particular sites that the uh, churches kind of flock to. And in Nazareth, they have the Church of the Annunciation which is a Greek Orthodox church and that's supposed to be the place where Mary was told she was going to have the Savior. But that's the kind of stuff that you see over in Israel. We're looking to uh, Luke chapter number 2. We'll start there. Luke chapter number 2. And we're going to go down to verse number 39 of Luke chapter 2. Of course, this is the town of Mary and Joseph. And this would be the place where Mary was told she was going to have a son. And uh, verse 39, And when they had performed all things according to the law, of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Of course, they're talking about after eight days they had to offer sacrifice. He was a firstborn son of Mary and Joseph, and hence they had to offer sacrifice for him to redeem him back to them. Because every, remember me saying every first thing belonged to God. In fact, it still does, doesn't it? All first things belong to God. And this is the occasion. So let's look. My handy dandy porter. Do you get the point? <laughs> right here is Nazareth. Nazareth. Okay. Down here is uh, Jerusalem. And here's Sychar. Everybody remember Sychar in John chapter 4? Uh, Jesus went into Samaria to the village of Sychar. But Nazareth is up here. It is part of the region of Galilee. Part of the region of Galilee. And it is not where if Anyone who wanted to be somebody or rub elbows with somebody for advancement, Nazareth is not the place to be from. That would be the city of Jerusalem. That's where all the big shots are and the people looking for advancement. So they, went, they returned to their own city. In chapter 1 of the book of Luke, Chapter 1 of the book of Luke. And I go down to verse number 26. And we have the announcement from the angel Gabriel. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. All of that information is very important, isn't it? His kingly line, his right to the throne is based on King David. He is a descendant of David. Now where did David live? Where did David live? Bethlehem. Right there. Okay? That's where David lived. That's where Samuel was sent to find the next king of Israel. Alright? So David. Later, David would become the king of Israel, wouldn't he? And his line is the kingly line. And Joseph is in that line. Well, we also understand that Mary 
is in that line too, isn't it? Okay? In Luke chapter 2, he is, that is the Son of Man, and they trace it all the way back to Adam, but that line is through Mary. In Matthew chapter 1, the line is traced to Joseph, who is a descendant of the royal family. So, the house of David, or Joseph, the house of David, and she is told, you're going to have a son, in verse 31, his name will be Jesus. And he shall be great. He most certainly will, wouldn't he? And he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, who? Now his, his supposed father was Joseph, wasn't it? But this is here because he is part of the royal family. He is entitled to sit on David's throne. And he will sit on David's throne and rule for a thousand years in absolute peace, will he not? And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Amen. That, I put the amen in there. <laughs> okay. Of course, she naturally would say, you know, how, how is this possible? How can this be? Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. And she is told how it was supposed to be. And let's start... With verse, uh, let's, let's start with verse 20. But while he thought on these things, this is Joseph, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And that is exactly what Jesus means. Savior. He shall save his people from their sins. So how can this be? That is because he is conceived of the Holy Ghost. He did not come into this world through an earthly father. Otherwise he would have inherited the sin nature. And would have excluded him from being the Savior of mankind. Of course, he grew up in Nazareth. He had family, didn't he? He had some brothers and sisters. Four brothers, at least two sisters. It'd be kind of hard to... You know, if the brothers were talk, thinking about getting into some kind of meanness, Jesus would not be the one to have around. All right. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter number 13. And Verse number 53 will be where we are. Matthew chapter 13 verse 53 And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables he departed thence and when he was come into his own country he taught them in their synagogue inasmuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? 
Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James, Joseph, and Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? You know, there was others who questioned his ability, who questioned his level of intelligence and understanding the law. Okay? Because at, even at the age of 12, didn't he confound the doctors at the temple because he knew more than the, than the average 12-year-old? All right. And they were offended in him, but, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor save in his own country and among his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their what? They didn't believe. You notice in our reading they kept saying, This man, this man. How does this man know these things? Is he not the son of Joseph? Is he not his mother Mary? Of course, these villages are very small. So naturally, everybody knows everybody. But how does this man know these things? We have the answer to that. <laughs> we have the answer to that. Let's go to Luke chapter number 4. Luke chapter number 4. Verse 16, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me to, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, gave it again unto the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Well, you remember then, he said, this is fulfilled in your ears. Okay? Making himself to be that deliverer, that Messiah. Well, down to verse 29. And all they in the synagogue, when they had heard these things, were filled with wrath. Verse 28. And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon the city was built that they might cast him down headlong. That's a pretty angry bunch, isn't it? Let's go to the next picture there, sweet pea. This is a picture of a... Uh, uh, well, it's a dwelling. That's what it is. Don't look very, you know. Uh, I see it's missing a TV, uh, missing a couch, you know, missing the modern comforts, right? But basically, these things, they, they really didn't stay in them. They were just there for shelter for the night, is basically what they were there for. Next one, please. Now these pictures are, are in Nazareth. These are part of the tours that they take people to. See the water, see the table here where they would sit and eat. But it's not really... Missing some flowers too, isn't it? You know? But it's not really anything real to get really excited about. Another one. And... Would you like to stand there and, and make those uh, make those quilts or blankets? Putting a, a you know, have that, that pedal that you push to open it and push the thing through and then shut it and pull it back through and, and then work on that for a good while. Aren't we spoiled, huh? 
<laughs> but yeah, that's that was a lot of work. But you notice there's not a lot of, of extra things all around there. And you notice the roof up here. See the beams across? And on top of there was usually placed some straw and some stuff to kind of hold it together. It was mainly just protection because there wasn't really a lot of rain. So you didn't have to worry about a lot of rain. And the next one... There's a nice saw. Man working with some wood and he's got his hammer here. There's that saw. And uh, there's also not a lot of trees. Okay? Might be small ones about the size of that. But not a lot of trees. So Joseph's occupation was not really a <laughs> money making type of situation. Okay? Alright. Now this picture was taken back uh, several, uh, well I forget what it was, was it uh, early 1900 somewhere in there? And this is a well. And it's got three spouts to it. And you've heard me say before that we've lost the sense of community. Where everybody looked after everybody. Well, there was a central well. Everybody would go to get their water. There was also, most places had a central grain bin dug into the ground with steps along the side of it going down. And all the grain that was harvested would go into that grain bin and everybody would be able to get out what they needed till the next harvest time. But that is, that is a well, and they would carry it on their heads, and uh, it was a daily task. Okay? Now, some people had large, well, we would, we would call them barrels, but they had large containers that they would fill with water in their homes so they wouldn't have to go out there so often. But that had to be done on a regular basis, and that was a job for... Uh, whomever was whoever was decided the rich folk of course had slaves that they would have them go do all this kind of stuff but that is a, that is a community well okay now you remember us talking about this trough area here when the camels came into town that is where they walked when Jesus said salt that has lost its savors, not fit for anything but to be pitched out and trodden under foot of men, they would pitch it out into the street. But those streets are very narrow. Even in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem, you'll find the streets very narrow. And the steps, these, of course these don't have steps, but we found, there's some steps up here, but we found uh, the, some steps where we were walking. But... Uh, sometimes in these other places, but that's what you know, and that's this is a modern, obviously a modern picture. But I want you to see the street and how it how it elevates. All right, baby. A stable. Now you remember the place where Jesus was born was more of a cave turned into a stable. And uh, where uh, he stayed, but I just I found this picture and I thought it'd be interesting to see. There's a stable. I wonder what that mule's name is here. Okay, all right, go to the next one. Now this is on the other side of Nazareth, the other side of Nazareth, over that hill on the back you will find that that's where the city is. When they took him out of the city, they brought him up here. And we're going to throw him off that cliff when he walked out from among them. But that's where it is. All right, now this next picture, it shows a little more pronounced. Over here is the city. A little more pronounced, but that's where they wanted to pitch him down, throw him down headlong. And because they would not, they rejected. And of course, that would be when Jesus would turn and move to Capernaum 
And there he would live for the next three and a half years, or three years of his earthly ministry. His base would be out of Capernaum and he would not return to Nazareth again. Okay? So they, uh, well folks, they made a goof, didn't they? All right, they wouldn't listen to him. They didn't care what he had to say, so he left them and moved and went to Capernaum. Now, the only claim to fame for the city of Nazareth is the where Jesus grew up. Even today, there's not a whole lot of this things to see in Nazareth. What I have heard. Uh, did any of you guys go to Nazareth? Did you go to Nazareth? You did? Okay. Um, we didn't, on our, our group, we didn't go there, but I've, I've not really heard a lot of good things about Nazareth. Okay. Pardon? Yes, it is. It's one of the major cities for the Arab people. The city of Nazareth. And, it, and some estimate the population to be around 70,000. But you know, those houses are shoved together and on top of each other. But it is uh, Arab held. And uh, if you would go from Israel up in go up to see Nazareth you'd have to cross the border the line there and they they have to show their passports and they have to tell them why they were there and all that kind of thing it gets it gets kind of sticky okay but uh, that hill is interesting isn't it that they were going to throw him down because they did not like what they heard the, uh, let's go to John chapter 1. And apparently, not a lot has changed about the city of Nazareth. John chapter 1, we're going all the way over to verse number 43. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, saith unto him, Follow me. Then now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and in the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That's a good question, isn't it? So obviously, the city was not some place that you would like to be from. It was not a hot spot or, or uh, a place where the uh, educated met. Okay? And of course, uh, Philip tells him, Come and see. Come and see for yourself. And of course, Jesus tells him, I saw you. I knew what was happening to you. And he called him to follow him. So there's a, there's a lot uh, in, the, in the fact that the city of Nazareth, those folk, of course, they saw him grow up. They, they knew him. But they still didn't know him. Okay. We are told that as Jesus grew, he grew in favor with God and man. But they still didn't know him. You know, you can be around someone for a long time and still not know them. All right. Now, somewhere between the age of 12 and Jesus' uh, adulthood, Joseph would pass away. And we know that Jesus took on the care of his mother, which is rightly so. He was the firstborn. It was his responsibility. So the family, his brothers, oh, it's also true, isn't it, that his brothers did not believe on him till after he rose from the dead. Right? 
And in the book of Acts chapter 15, we're told James, the Lord's brother, he would assume the pastorate of the Jerusalem church. So the city of Nazareth, the majority of our Lord's ministry was in the region of Galilee. Well, if, if he was looking to impress folk, impress the religious leaders, Jerusalem would have been the place. But instead, he was in Galilee. That's where the lower class folk lived. And some of them would not even go there. And of course, you remember, they would have to go over the Sea of Galilee, over the Jordan River, to get around to not step into the region of Samaria. So they would go around it if they were traveling up there or from up there down to Jerusalem. They would go around it. They would not go in there. And uh, this, uh, these cities, but, beloved, what better place to call his disciples than from the region of Galilee? They were not, he was not looking for the educated, he was not looking for the cream of, the, of society, he was looking for willing hearts. And these were working class folks, so they were not in depth with the law, but they sure recognized the Messiah, did they not? All right. Anything else? Anybody want to add anything? religious leaders, the Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, they, they, they ruled with an iron hand. Well, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, uh, those uh, religious folks, and besides that, in their minds, he disrespected them because they didn't consult with him. They didn't, he didn't come to defend himself before them, you know. And when they went out to find him, uh, he would answer their questions where they couldn't say anything about it, say anything against it. So yes, you know, and the fact that he was from Nazareth. And remember uh, when they had that discussion that no prophet comes from uh, Galilee, Remember that discussion? I think the 7th chapter of Luke. No prophet comes from Galilee. Look for yourself and see. Well, he wasn't from Galilee. I mean, from Nazareth, was he? He was from Bethlehem. That's where he was born. So, uh, that made, that made the, the whole difference. But like I said, the prophecies concerning Christ were plainly written. Could be seen by anybody. And then he matched every requirement down to the letter. Amazing. You know, the, uh, I think someone said they calculated for him to fulfill one was like one in four billion something. Just one prophecy. Well, he fulfilled them all, didn't he? And did exactly. And. Uh, yeah, I think it would have been interesting after the temple shook and 
the veil was torn. If some of the, some of those religious leaders kind of paused a minute and said, "Wait a minute, this is," you know, because that because he he fulfilled everything and opening the way that we might approach the Father through him. Let's stand together, please.